Welcome back. My name is Lee Polite from Axion Labs, and today I'm going to answer the toughest question in chromatography, and that is, how do you develop a method in HPLC? Now, i got to tell you, this to most people is the most complicated thing. In fact, when I write courses, if the course involves or includes method development, it gets ranked as an advanced class. So this is considered to be like the hardest thing out there. So let me put your minds at ease. It's a lot easier than, than you think. So first question, when we do method development in HPLC, this is coming up with the recipe. Um, so my analogy is, um, you know, I'm not a very good cook. Uh, I know how to cook. I mean, I can boil water and I can measure things. Pretty good at that analytical chemistry stuff. But I really don't know how you choose the right temperatures and times. And so when you make a cake, um, like, do you, you, you mix the flour uh, uh, first? Or do you put the flour in the oven and then you mix it? Or do you put it in the oven for 16 hours at two degrees? Or, you know, like, how do you make those decisions? So HPLC method development is the same thing. How do we find the right mobile phase, stationary phase, flow rate, temperature? It sounds overwhelming, but let me give you a couple of really simple ways to get you going. Step one, and this is the best shortcut ever. Step one, look in column catalogs. So open up the Agilent catalog, the Waters catalog, the Phenomenus catalog, and look for your application. If you're trying to separate benzene, toluene, xylene, don't reinvent the wheel. Look in the column catalog, and I guarantee you will find 10 applications of how to separate benzene, toluene, xylene. And in those applications, they will tell you the column length, diameter, film thickness, injector temperature, detector temperature. It's all there for you. So step one, look at the column catalog. There's thousands and thousands of applications that have already been developed. Um, uh, I like paper catalogs because I'm old-fashioned, but go to the website. Go to the Shimatsu website. Go to the Agile website and type in a keyword, benzoic acid, and again, you will hit every method they have for benzoic acid. So that is my number one uh, approach that I always recommend for method development because the methods are already out there. So do that first. Don't reinvent the wheel. Step two. If you have to start from scratch, if you have a total known, you have something that's not in the catalogs, well, there's a really simple approach that, that we use here in the class to teach method development. And that is, we're gonna do what we call a scouting run. We're gonna try every mobile phase in the world to see which mobile phase works. Now that sounds daunting, but we're gonna do that in one injection. So in 30 minutes, you're gonna know a lot more than you did 30 minutes ago. So what is my standard set of conditions? First, we choose a good reverse phase base deactivated C18 column. Okay, that's a lot of words there. Let me, let me explain that. In the HPLC world, we could choose different stationary phases. The most popular one is C18. That's 18 carbons stuck onto the column. Now, there are dozens and dozens of different C18s. There's good ones and there's bad ones, there's old ones and new ones. So the bottom line is you want a base deactivated C18. These are end cap columns or sterically protected. Um, uh, you really wanna make sure that there's no acidic sites in the column. It's gotta be a very neutral, neutral column. So step one, a good base deactivated column. In my class, I give a list of my favorites. Um, uh, I'll give you a short list. And I apologize for everyone I offend by not listing them, but my favorite column is the, uh, uh, the Agilent uh, Zorbax Eclipse Plus. Eclipse Plus C18 is my, my favorite base deactivated. Uh, Waters makes a fantastic one called uh, the, the Sunfire. Uh, they have another one that, that's really good called X-Bridge. And Phenomenix has a great one called Gemini. So there's a bunch of good ones out there. Find yourself a good base deactivated C18 column and then, then run a gradient from 10% to 100% acetonitrile or methanol, whichever one you're using. In that run, if I go from 10 to 100%, let's say in 30 minutes, I will now spread out all the different components in that sample. And in that one injection, I will know exactly where the peaks are coming off. From that point, I will then know if all my peaks are coming off between 75 and 100%, well, I don't need to start at 10%. I could start much higher. So after that one run, what we call the scouting run, you'll probably have a working method. It'll probably be too long. And then all you need to do is optimize it. So method development at HPLC, a lot easier than people think. Start with a good base deactivated C18 column. Uh, do a gradient from 10% to 100% of cedar nitrile or methanol in 30 minutes. And then simply see where your peaks come off. That's method development. So now I'd love to hear feedback from you guys. So what are your tricks? What are your specialties? What seems to work well for you? Some people like to add a little TEA, triethylamine to the mobile phase to clean up peak shapes. Um, what has worked for you? What columns do you like? Uh, I love hearing back from you guys because that's where I learn. That's where I get the real, uh, the real data.